I will call the meeting to order. If everyone could please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice. All right. uh, Commissioner Young, could you uh, help in welcoming everyone to our meeting? Sure. Uh, good evening, everybody. Want to welcome you to Cowan Township uh, Board of Commissioners meeting. Um, as we've decided, we're rotating welcomings. Um, tonight, we have uh, quite a few presentations. Um, uh, we'll see the audit uh, of the township uh, funds, um, riveting stuff. Uh, make sure to keep awake during that. Um, and then we have some real uh, neat presentations, the uh, Downingtown Library, Old Cowan Historical Society, and the Sustainability Task Force. Um, we'll also hear about some uh, other charity events uh, possibly coming up and um, revisions to, to the Township uh, Board of Commissioners meetings uh, at times. So just want to welcome everybody and uh, let's get to work. Thank you, Josh. Thanks, Josh. All right. Uh, next on the agenda, citizens uh, to be heard. Any citizens here in the township building? Do not see any hands raised. A lot of citizens. They are mm -hmm. jumping up and down again. Uh, how about in Zoom? Not at this time. All right. Uh, first presentation is Mally. Do we have a represent representative from uh, Mally? Oh, online. Perfect. <laughs> Hmm. Hey, Hello. welcome, Chris. Hello, you can see me? Can you hear me? Yes, both. Fantastic. It's been a while since I've, I've been on Zoom. I usually use Teams, so it's, I was hoping it would work. Um, <laughs> appreciate it. I will, um, I think the word you used was riveting. I will uh, try to, to, to keep it as... Uh, <laughs> far from dull as I can. Um, so we are just about ready to finish up the 2023 audit. Um, you all have the most recent draft. Um, we received the representation letter earlier today. So I'm just waiting for my typing department to finish making it pretty and then we'll, we'll get the final reports issued. But what you have is what you're gonna get in the final report. Um, I did uh, provide a little four page summary. Um, I'm gonna just kind of breeze through that real quick. That's gonna cover most of the, the, the big talking points for the audit. Um, feel free to interrupt me at any point if you have any questions or need me to repeat anything, but I'll, I'll just dive into that summary. So um, the first page of that summary of findings and results, um, the financial statement audit. Um, this is your audit of you know, the general fund, all your funds, your footnotes. Um, that is an unmodified opinion. Um, that's a good opinion. It's the best one you can have. It's what you want to have on your financials. What that means is they're free of any material misstatement. They comply with GAAP. That's generally accepted accounting principles. Those are the rules every, uh, you know, every entity has to follow. Complies with GASB. That's the Governmental Accounting Standards Board. That's the, the body that creates the rules specific to government. Um, no scope limitations. Uh, we came in with a very lengthy list of documents that we wanted to see. Um, and, uh, you know, your business office, Lisa was able to provide us with everything that, that we needed in order to conduct the audit. No instances of non-compliance. Um, we did have one material weakness, um, for this year's audit. Um, if you look at the, the large financial hmm. statement, you'll see the last eight, nine pages are new. Um, hmm. that is because we have a single audit. I'll get to that in a minute, but Within that section, uh, I think on the last page of the financial or the second to last page, you'll see we have two findings this year, one related to the financial statement section, one related to the, the single audit. Because there's a single audit this year, we're required to put those in your financial report. So it's a little bit of a different presentation this year. Um, the financial finding really has to do with account reconciliation. Um, when we came in to do the audit, we have uh, a, a fair amount of adjustments that we had to make, mostly in the area of uh, converting uh, what's predominantly a cash basis 
set of books over to the accrual basis. So a lot of adjustments to make sure payables is right, receivables is right, um, uh, things of that nature. So we did want to put in a finding for that. You know, we are an independent um, auditor, um, so we don't want to do too much work as part of the audit. We can't audit our own work. Um, we do feel that we were able to maintain independence while doing some of this work because we're doing it uh, sort of in conjunction with getting information from your business office. But um, something we did want to just make note of in our report that there was a lot of adjustments as part of the audit. The, the next part of that summary is the uniform guidance audit. That's the single audit. It goes by a few different names, yellow book audit, single audit, uniform <laughs> guidance audit. This is the audit of federal money. So anytime um, any entity, whether it's a for-profit, non-profit government, spends over $750,000 of federal money, it triggers this special audit of that federal spending. So in 2023, you guys spent uh, about $1.1 million of the ARPA funds. That's the money that um, all the municipalities and PA got as part of, of, of COVID, um, uh, COVID reparations, whatever you want to call it. Um, so because that exceeded the $750,000, we had to audit that money specifically. Um, we do have an adverse opinion on um, the uniform guidance audit. Um, the reason for that is we did have a finding related to that, which I'll, I'll get to in one second. Um, actually, it's in the next box. One material weakness related to the audit of the major federal awards. Um, if you skip to the last box, you'll see it's related to reporting requirements. So what what page is that on? I'm sorry. It's right now. This is on the first page of I'm to, uh, the, the four page summary. The findings are on. Page. 82 of the financials where they, they start, it's the fourth page from the end is where we have the financial statement audit findings. And then on the next page, it talks about the major federal award program audit findings. So this is when, is everyone able to find that or? Yeah. yeah, we don't have page 82, but it ends at 72 and then the single audit starts. Yes. Yeah, so you should have a page. Is the second to last page, does that say audit citation plan or audit citation action plan at the top? Second to last page? Yes. Audit citation, action plan. Okay, so if you go two pages before that. Okay. Uh, summary? Yes, yeah, summary of audit results is, is that bullet point A, go down to bullet point B. 33. 33. Yes, I'm sorry, Chris, go ahead. 33. Mm -hmm. It's all right. We all found it. The rewards, 33. Thank you. I'm sorry. That's my fault. I just pulled this off our network and our, our typing department's already fixed page numbers. So I apologize. That's why we had to disconnect there. We're but, winging it. All right. I appreciate <laughs> it. Um, so at the bottom of that, that bullet point B, that first one, that's the finding related to the financial statement that I just talked about with account reconciliation. And if you flip the page, there's going to be a bullet point C, um, findings and question costs, major fellow award program audit. This is where we talk about the reporting finding. So when we audit federal awards, it's a very um, uh, it's a very specific audit testing approach. There's certain things that we have to audit for each of these programs, and they're outlined by, in this case, uh, it's the Department of Treasury. So the Department mm -hmm. of Treasury says we have to audit. Did you spend the money on what you were supposed to spend it on? Um, they also say we have to test compliance with reporting requirements. So we had no issues with allowable costs with ARPA. All the money was spent on allowable projects. Reporting, we had an issue though. So uh, with the ARPA funds, every year, for every year ending March 30th, you have to file an annual report as of April 30th. 
um, of, of what you did with the money in the last year. So the March 30th, 23 report was not filed. Um, my understanding is there was, there was turnover, there was trouble getting access. Ultimately, um, Department of Treasury uh, closed the report, and now you're going to be reporting your 20, 22, 23 information in the 23, 24 report. Basically, they said, you didn't file it, but you need to catch up. But because you didn't file it, you were not in compliance with that requirement, which created the finding, which created the adverse uh, opinion on the, the the single audit. As soon as you're not in compliance with one of their, their requirements, okay. uh, that happens. It's not a big deal. You guys usually don't get federal money. Um, my, I, I don't think you have enough next year that you'll even have a single audit again. So this is all going to disappear next year, but we had to report it this way. <laughs> Uh, uh, this year. So that is, um, that's the, the, the two findings there. Just going back to the first page of the executive summary, um, major pro program audited was the coronavirus state and local fiscal recovery. We also, for low risk audity, it says, no, you are all considered a high risk auditee. That's automatic because you didn't have single audits in the prior years. So your first time single audit auditee, you're automatically high risk. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. it's, it's very interesting when you start getting into these single audits, especially when it's, you know, a one-off and we had several of those with the ARPA funds. It was not unusual to, to have an occasional finding because you usually don't work with federal money, You're probably not going to work with federal money like this again. So it's, um, I, I don't, I don't know. It, we had to do it. It's a small price to pay for, you know, million, million five of, of free money falling but I don't really see that adverse opinion as a big issue from an auto perspective. I appreciate Switching you over. keeping us in check there. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, uh, I, I hate having to issue findings for single audits, um, but it, it's so, it's just like a checklist that you go down. There's just certain things you have to do. And as soon as you don't, don't fulfill it, it just, everything's automatic. So um, okay, next page of the four-page summary, summary of significant accounting estimates. Um, probably the biggest thing here is your net pension liability. Your police pension plan was, uh, last year, it was underfunded by about $1.3 million. <clears throat> this year, it's underfunded by $20,000. you are essentially, uh, what was it, 99.9% .9 funded. So mm -hmm. what happened there was two years ago, you were 106% funded. 2022 had awful investment returns, so you went down to 90. This year, you bounced back up to, to right, right around 100%. The non-uniform pension plan, now your, your non-uniform plan is through PMRS. So it's always a one-year look back. You're always one year behind on your non-uniform compared to your police. So where your police plan had a big loss in 22, and then in this year had sort of the gain and the bounce back, on the non-uniform plan, you see you went from overfunded 1.3 million in 21. Now you're underfunded. That's because you're taking the big, you know, the bad investment year this year, and then it'll bounce back next year. You're a year behind your police plan. Mm -hmm. Your minimum municipal <laughs> obligations, uh, pretty consistent uh, year to year for both the non-uniform and the police plan. Capital assets, which is the, the last uh, row of boxes there, your governmental activities. Um, cost is about 46 million, accumulated depreciation is about 24. You're about 52% through the life of your assets there. So it's, it's a good ratio. Usually I see anything between 40 and 60. So you're right in the middle there um, for what I see in municipalities. You did have about $1.4, $1.5 million of depreciation this year. So that's loss of value on your assets. Um, you did have an awful lot of capital investment in the year that more than offset that. You had about 4.2 million in capital additions during 23. A lot of road projects, um, Barley Sheep Road, Lloyd Avenue, Municipal Drive Bridge, Moore Road Bridge, uh, Park Drive, uh, Reed Street, which is where most of the ARPA uh, federal money went to. Uh, so a huge amount of, of uh, road and, and storm uh, stormwater projects. 
another about 500,000 in police and, and public work vehicles as well. So a um, lot of investment there in capital assets. Uh, anytime it exceeds depreciation, uh, you know, it's showing investment into the township, which is always a good thing. The next page, uh, just some key revenue and expenditure uh, metrics. Uh, revenues, your main revenue is taxes. Uh, pretty flat year on year. It's right, 7.4 million last year, went up to 7.5 this year. Uh, EIT was up about 50,000, so was real estate taxes, up about 50. The intergovernmental, you'll see the big jump there, went from 1.5, almost doubled to about 2.9 million. Part of that's mm -hmm. going to be that ARPA money that you spent this year. That gets, even though you received that in prior years, doesn't get recognized as revenue until you spend it, which was in 23. So there's 1.1 million there of uh, recognized ARPA funds. Uh, you also got 100,000 in uh, Hurricane Ida, uh, Pima reimbursement that finally came in. I saw another 153,000 for the Lloyd Bridge Signal Grant. So a lot of federal and state money coming in uh, for the municipality to use. Golf course charges for services down a little bit, went from 900,000 down to 800,000. Decrease there was uh, green fees and cart rentals uh, were down compared to the prior year. And then solid waste charges for services up, went from about 1.6 to 1.85, about a quarter million dollar increase that is tied directly to the rate increase that you had in solid waste from 52 to $59. So about a 13% rate increase fed right into the bottom line of, of total revenue increase there. Expenditure composition, uh, public safety, usually your, your biggest uh, expense area, really flat year on year, right around 3.6 million, went up about 50,000 um, in 23. So that's amazing. Anytime public safety doesn't go up five, six, 7%, that, that sounds really good to me. So really good cost control there in the public safety area. Public Works, Highway and Street, giant jump there. And that's all those capital projects that I was talking about uh, just a couple minutes ago, um, driving that up. Golf course, uh, expenses went up 500, about 580,000 to 760, mm -hmm. about $180,000 increase. Um, about half of that is non-operating. Um, your depreciation expense was up about 30,000 in that fund. Um, also, the allocation of pension costs over to there was about 45000 So if you, you take those two things out, just day-to-day -day operation expense was up about $90,000. Um, repairs and maintenance was up about forty, dollars and then salaries and benefits was up about 50000 in the golf course. Solid waste, um, relatively flat up a little bit, went from about $1.8 million to $1.9 million. Uh, it's the contractor expenses, you know, the people that, that you guys pay to, to provide that service. Uh, the next page, uh, last two couple slides here, um, long-term debt. Um, you were at 12.3 million last year. You're down to about 11.7 this year. N nothing new, no new debt, no refundings, anything like that. But you did have about 600,000 principal payment. And then the last slide, fund balance, probably the most important slide. In uh, probably the most important slide in the, in the whole thing. So what is fund balance? If you look at the balance sheet of any one of your funds, if you take your assets, you pay off all your debts, your liabilities, this is what's left. Um, so the blue line, kind of starting in the middle, that's your general fund. It's trending upward nicely. Um, went from 5.1 million two years ago to 6.2. It's up to about 7.8 million this year. That's almost dead even with your annual expenses in the general fund. Um, so if you had, you know, all things being equal, if you had absolutely no money coming in for some reason, you'd be able to continue operating, you know, as usual out of your general fund for a year. That, that's a good, healthy fund balance to have there. Um, the orange line, this is your other governmental funds. This is your ARPA, your capital projects, um, your liquid mm -hmm. fuels. Um, this is the one line which usually will go all over the place depending on what you're doing. Um, it's very much project driven. So it was 1.3 million two years ago. It jumped up to 9.3 million at the end of 22. And the reason for that was that 8.1 million note that you guys took out for capital projects. And now what's happening is it's starting to go down as you're spending that money on your projects. So eventually that 7.2 will, you know, get low again and 
you'll decide you want to do another project, you'll go get money and it'll shoot up again. So that just is always going to go along that wave, depending on what you guys are doing. And then at the bottom, the yellow line at your, your solid waste uh, fund balance, really flat, right around 1.3, 1.2 million a year. And below that is the golf course. Um, uh, $200,000 of fund balance two years ago. And the last couple of years, it's right around half a million. So, um, you know, you solid waste, golf course, solid, steady um, lines, general fund growing a little bit. And uh, your other governmental is just, you know, going along with the projects you're doing. So uh, I didn't see any red flags there in, in fund balance or, or health or anything like that. So, um that's that's really all I have. I think that's all the big bullet points from the audit. Um, I'd be happy to to field any questions if you have any. Commissioners, any any comments, questions? Just the one thing I didn't hear you um, say the the employee pension plan, the non uniform, what percentage that was, and I, I located it, it was ninety six point one percent funded. Uh. Is that this year or was that last year? I don't know. It's on page 61. It says plan fiduciary net position as a percentage of the total pension liability. Yes, you're right. I was didn't quite sound right at first because of the big loss, but it was almost 120% funded last year. So you lost about 24% of, of the funding. It's still very well funded at 96%. I'd expect by the time we, we, we're doing this next year, it's going to be back up over 100. Thanks. Any other questions? I, I don't. I, this might be a question, but I was just wondering, when we had taken out a bond before we received the FEMA grant money, does it reflect in the audit at all that that has dissipated or changed in any way? Um. You mean the money you borrowed or the, the spending yes. of the ARPA money? Well, yeah, I think I mean, we had gotten a bond before we re actually received the money. Oh, so, so pre-20, I'm trying to think, that money came in in 21 and 22, I think. So you're saying back in like 2020? So we we didn't get FEMA money yet, my understanding. It. We got PEMA money, which is the state money, okay. but we didn't get federal money yet. We didn't receive it yet. No. Okay. 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 Thank you. Any other questions from commissioners? Reach out to the residents here in the township building. Any residents have uh, comments, questions? Do not see any hands raised at this time. Any in Zoom? One person from Zoom. Okay. <clears throat> yes, Mark, are you there? Hey, Mark. Where are you? <clears throat> yeah. He's not showing up on the screen. Oh, okay. Well, usually we would see name or so. Oh, that... hey, Mark, are you are you still there? Yes, I'm here. I'm trying to. Oh, there you go. That's Mark DeYoung. Hopefully, Welcome. I'm not on the screen. My Philly shirt because it's embarrassing. <laughs> yeah. No, we see your name, so that's good. Okay, that's good. Anyway. Um... I, I talked a little while ago about a reconciliation of the FEMA money. And it seems like from what I'm hearing tonight, and I could be totally off base. So please take it with a grain of salt. Um, we borrowed 8.1 million expecting to get that amount back from FEMA and PEMA. Where are we on that money? We haven't received, we haven't received anything from FEMA. No, uh, our township manager can answer this. Give us an update. Uh, good evening, Mr. DeYoung. Um, as at currently, there was a preliminary um, 
FEMA provided some preliminary estimates of what they would be providing the township. Uh, Mr. Stackhouse, who had been coordinating with FEMA, uh, felt that was a little low and has gone back and is currently negotiating with them. They went through another round. They requested some additional documentation and we're waiting for a final figure. So from FEMA, no, we, we did not feel the amount that they were offering was appropriate. And on behalf of the township, Mr. Stackhouse went back to uh, request additional funds. FEMA felt maybe they, they could provide some additional monies and we're just waiting for the final figure. May I ask what the original offer was? I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, not, I can get that figure for you, of course. My understanding was just six figures, not. It was, not, it was low. Yeah, it's, it was very low. So what do we ask back for then as a higher amount? I don't believe we asked for a specific figure. I think, uh, I believe Mr. Stackhouse just demonstrated the amount of uh, funding the township has invested in stormwater projects post Ida and requested that they reconsider their final offer. Uh, they agreed, <laughs> did then of course get bumped up to another round of review and that is the delay. So hopefully when we hear back from them, it'll be a, a higher number. I do not know where that, that figure will land when it's all said and done, um, but that's, we are expecting a final figure to come from them shortly and we'll review that and determine next steps at that time. Okay. When we are through the final steps and we have the offer and expenses and the money spent, um, can we have a presentation of maybe 10, 15 minutes of, you know, how much came from the taxpayers, how much came from FEMA and where we netted out? Could that be a simple presentation? I think that, that could be, of course. Yeah, that could be set up. Okay, that'd be great. Appreciate it. All right, appreciate it, Mark. Any other Always comments? Always the money. Sorry. <laughs> Always. Always. <laughs> Any other comments from Zoom? Okay. Well, Chris, thank you so much for the presentation. Excellent. Uh, and uh, look forward to next year. Me as well. And uh, thanks again to, uh, you know, everybody over there for the help in getting this uh, audit done and doing the, the new single audit. I really appreciate uh, that and, and working with you guys. So if anything else comes up, please let me know. Thanks, Chris. Have a good night. All right, you too. Take Thank care, you. everyone. Uh, next on the agenda, Downingtown Library budget and update. Jasmine, hello, welcome. Hi, hello. how are you? I'm Jasmine Smith. I'm the new-ish director of the Downingtown Library. I've been there since February, so not quite a year yet, but enough time to kind of have my feet wet and a good idea of, of how things go day to day. Um, I had a couple of extra handouts up there for you. I'm gonna start with our fast facts. This covers the summer. Just to give you an idea of what do we do with the money that you contribute to the library as municipal support? So the answer is a lot. Um, you can see highlighted on this sheet that we have children's, adults, teens, and family programs. Our family programs are something we've expanded dramatically over the summer. Um, one of those family programs was our happy birthday Harry Potter drop-in party. We are pretty good at spelling. If you're not a fan of Harry Potter, that is a reference to the books. That's why it's spelled <laughs> in an odd way. Um, but we had over 300 people come mm. to that event. I was the sorting hat. And I sorted people from ages 3 to 83, and everybody oh, wow. seemed to be having a great time. <laughs> we also had pin the nose on Voldemort. We had a charm station where you could learn how to flick your pipe cleaner wand. We had wand making, and we, of course, had snacks, uh, theme snacks in our mm. program. So that was a lot of fun. We brought a lot of people in. Uh, residents of Collin Township are just as active with the library as many of our other municipalities. You can see we had around 4,000 or 5,000 circulations of materials to Collin Township um, library card holders. And our library card holder base is growing. A year ago, I just ran the statistics today, we had about 10,200 library card holders, mm -hmm. and this year we're at 11,200. So we have a lot of people joining us and appreciating what the library offers. I also have this programs flyer for you. 
Um, this is a sampling of the programs we offer. If I put them all on one sheet, the best I could do is a boring Excel spreadsheet because they just wouldn't all fit. Um, but we have three knitting crochet fiber arts groups that meet every week, and those attendees are very dedicated to those groups. Uh, we also have a gentle chair yoga that our attendees love so much that they have recently successfully lobbied to have it a second time each week. So now that is on Mondays and Thursdays. Um, our board game night attendees did the same, and now they meet twice a month instead of once, uh, and they seem to have a great time. We always have about 15 people coming to play board games with one another. Uh, we have film forum, writers group, book club. I've highlighted our drop-in story times. Uh, those are something we introduced over the summer. Our program room allows us to have about 20 children in registered programs, but our drop-ins are held out in our open space. And we had up to 80 people at a drop-in story time. Over the summer. So mm -hmm. it was a big boost in our numbers, but it's also really nice because our registered programs are relatively small. People who just aren't quite fast enough to snag one of those spots can still come to the drop-ins. They don't need to worry mm -hmm. about any sort of registration caps. Um, and those children and their families get to enjoy story time as well. So we've been really happy with that. And we do also do more community outreach based um, opportunities. So we have Pennsylvania Career Link coming to the library once a month. And we also have a representative from um, Representative Campbell's office coming once a month as well. Uh, they do sit outside my office, and I can tell you that many people sign up for their SEPTA cards. <laughs> that is the number one draw uh, <laughs> when the representative's representative is in the library. And we also have sort of our 2023 uh, summary sheet here. Um, we're not through 2024 yet, but I can tell at this point that our customer visits probably be up a little bit. Our circulation should be pretty similar to last year. And I think the big jump is going to be in program attendance because we've adjusted some of those programs to accommodate more people. We're seeing our program numbers really climb year over year. Um, so with all of that activity happening, I provided a budget request to the committee. Mm -hmm. um, we are currently seeing about a $3 per capita contribution from Calm, which is wonderful. Uh, we do split you guys with Coatesville Library. So everything is based on half of the township population. Mm -hmm. um, we would like to ask for a slight increase, which is going to help us do a couple of things. One of those things is that we are in the process of hiring a staff person who will serve as a children's program assistant. Uh, when we have 80 people at a children's program, it would be really helpful to have two adults running that, um, even if we just have somebody who can adjust the microphone while our children's coordinator is reading during story time. Um, so we're finding that we, need an extra pair of hands to <laughs> accommodate the number of people who are coming particularly to our children's programs. And we also want to be able to bring in more high quality STEM programs. We had two programs from the Marshall STEM Museum over the summer, which were really wonderful engineering and mechanical based programs. Uh, STEAM Museum is about trains, so uh, information and I think the kids had a great time, but those types of programs seem to be a little more expensive than some of our other programs. So that's an area that we would like to expand our offerings as well. Are there any questions about the library programming? Sure. I don't have any questions, just a couple comments. Uh, first, uh, just a full disclosure, I'm privileged enough to serve on the Downingtown Library Board um, and want to make sure everybody knows that. Um, uh, there's a couple of events coming up that people in the audience could attend. Um, do you want to just take a minute to talk about the brew down? Sure. So October 26 is the D town brew down. That is one of our two biggest fundraisers over the course of the year. If you like craft beer, we will have a good number of local brewers there. Uh, they will be offering samples of their various beers. And you get to vote for your favorites, and the winning breweries get a prize. So, uh, if you just want to 
taste what's happening locally. This is a really fun opportunity to do that. I personally am not a beer person, but I know a lot of people really enjoy that and look forward to the event. We're also having a brand new and what I hope will be very fun event on November 15th, which is a jigsaw puzzle contest. That is more my speed. Um, <laughs> and so we're going to be able to have people register for teams up to four people and everybody gets the same jigsaw puzzle. Time it and we see uh, who finishes first. So I think that's going to be really fun, but I'm also a librarian. So, you know, you're, you're <laughs> And then also the Friends book sale. Yes, the Friends book sale starts Friday. So that's tomorrow, tomorrow at four o'clock. Um, we have thousands of books that are currently laid out in the library. Um, if you are like a Black Friday enthusiast, come at four, stand in line, fight people for books. <laughs> and like to enjoy your books in a slightly more calm and quiet manner, wait until 5.30. It goes until seven o'clock. By the first hour and a half, things have quieted down. And then it actually continues through the weekend, Saturday and Sunday. And the sale goes for quite a while. The regular sale will go for a week. Then they'll turn it into a bag sale where you can get a bag, fill it up for a couple of hours. Um, so it'll actually go to the end of the month. I think the last day is October 26th. So we've got a lot going on. And the book sale does turn the library it's just all tables full of books but the friends uh do an incredible job of they do. Uh, uh, that and it uh helps fund the library so uh if you're looking for a used book or you know something like that uh they have dvds and puzzles dvds and... we have cds they have boxes and boxes i'm told that they have another 25 boxes of puzzles still in reserve that they haven't had room to put out yet so if you're into puzzles we've got you covered come to the book <laughs> sale and then show off your skills on the 15th of November. And I just want to uh, acknowledge Jasmine. She's doing an amazing job of uh, oh, director okay. of the library and we're, you know, moving forward and really um, growing and um, prospering. And just want to also recognize Francine Day, who's our board chair, who does an incredible job and uh, helps raise money, um, uh, putting all these events on so that, you know, we can be a prosperous library. So. The last thing I'll say is that we're not, but um, we are pushing the boundaries of our building. We are just coming out the seams. Um, it's especially apparent when we have the book sale going on and realize how little storage we have in our building, but also some of these really big programs and story times. Um, you know, we have adult programs, we have children's programs, we have one room to have them in, so we need to schedule things really strategically. And we do have a pretty small space to do that in. So within the next couple of years, we are looking at an expansion project. And so I imagine when I come back and talk to you in a <laughs> year, probably be talking a lot more about plans for expansion and what that might be. So just to put that on your radar. Right now. Any <laughs> other questions? No, thank you very much. Okay, oh, thank, thank you. you all. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you. I, I think Tony would like a book on trails, the benefits of walking. <laughs> oh, really? All right. So he can bring you a, a book about trails. <laughs> <laughs> and benches. Benches on the trail. That's an inside <laughs> joke. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next presentation, Old Count Historical Society. Who do we have? Dawn, welcome. Hello. Hi, Dawn. Hey. Have a good evening. Good evening. Good night. I'm not very good at this. Dawn Coglin, 4019 Edges Mill Road, in downtown Chip. I'm here tonight um, representing the Old Town Historical Society. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for inviting me. Um, as most of you know, we are a <laughs> private nonprofit organization dedicated to our mission to research and preserve the 300 year plus rich history here in Cal. I am here to share some of our achievements this past year and our goals for 2025. We continue to research historic properties and then share that historical research with the public 
by posting it on our OCHS website and on the Count Township website and in Westchester University's website. We fund and we place, as mo many of you know, these green and white markers on historic resources that are all around Count Township. And it's a very popular and ongoing program. We have three that are gonna be here next week. So we're very excited about that. Um, we have a new project and we're partnering with the Count Historic Commission and Count Township to scan and curate historic photos of Count Township. We have a kickoff here in this room on Saturday, November 9th at 1 p.m. Um, and we invite everybody and anybody to come. If you have any historic photographs of Count Township, there's been information out on our Facebook page, on the Township Facebook page. So um, bring us what you have. We would love to start building and curating those resources. Um, December 10th, we'll find us hosting our annual Christmas Candlelight program featuring the students from Count Elementary School Chorus, the incredible Meister singers who we think are just amazing and we love having them year after year. And this year, the 49ers are coming back to join us as well. Our first annual Christmas Historic House Tour will feature two private homes from the 1700s decorated in their holiday finest. Our society is supported by the helping hands of youth in a local Boy Scout troop and the Thorndale Fire Company. We are always seeking more partnerships and we invite you all to join us in our efforts to share and celebrate our history here in the heart of Chester County. Thank you. Are there right. any questions? Thank you. Sister Dawn? I just wanted to say, you know, that you guys have done a great job of coming back together after rough. Uh, a lot of people don't might not know this, but uh, Old Town Historical Society was uh, directed by uh, some couple of elderly individuals who did a wonderful job, but during COVID, it all got a little too hard and we lost one of them. Did we lose both now? Uh, so this group of people sitting here, are, I can say are responsible for pulling it all back together and working really hard to uh, make it work with the historical commission as well. Like starting to do some partnerships and things. That. So great job. Thank you. Thank you. President Patty DeFrosia has one of our latest acquisitions. It's a number of arrow points and spear points that are from the Pollock Farm. They were collected by um, Dan Jeffries when he was a kid. Oh um, and Pollock wow. Farm was located where the Downingtown High School is mm -hmm. over in that direction by Rock Raymond. Um, so oh, he geez. just recently donated those to us. Um, so we're really proud of those. And we wanted to share those with all of you. We all know who Dan Jeffries is. Thank you, is, right? Mark, for your kind words. Oh, no. Dan, yeah, Dan yeah. Jeffries um, opened up Jeffries Farm Market. Mm -hmm. And um, his wife is, is a Zen related to the farmers that um, farmed Spackman Davis Farm for many, many decades. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dawn. It's like sleep. I'm like the early Yeah. yeah. This is on the property. Wow, it's amazing. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. In case Dawn didn't plug it, definitely uh, whenever they are open over at the Historical Society and Count Meeting House, you yeah. need to visit. A lot of history there. Wow. Oh, yeah. That's something that arrow hits. Nice. They stand on the property. Next on the agenda, we have a presentation for Sustainability Task Force. Hey. We are excited to hear this one. What's this? Yeah. We have Joellen. Just welcome. Also, I... Any people? Ooh. Hello. Hi, I am Joellen. 
Not too well. I live down the street <laughs> and I'm also on the Callan Sustainability Task Force with some other amazing people. And I'm here to do a progress update because I think it's been six months. And so we felt like we needed to do a <laughs> update for everybody so that you know what, that we've been doing stuff and not just sitting around hanging out with Abby. <laughs> okay. So a few of the members are here tonight with me, but um, we are quite a large task force. Um, so there's me, Joella McBride. We have Helen Eckelweiner, Lindsay Beecher, Suzanne Spears, Gavin Spears, Ann Dusen, Mike Irwin, Cheryl Spaulding, and Abby Swan and Don Vimazal. Vimazal? Vimazal. <laughs> Woo! Totally practiced this, right, guys? No, just kidding. Um, so our task was if if our name didn't you know, spell it out for you, but we are supposed to be creating a report to detail any sustainability related recommendations that we have for the board of commissioners. Um, and how we have been doing that is we have been meeting monthly here in this very room, um, sharing resources and also speaking with experts. Um, so an example of that is recently we had the sustainability director for the um, Chester County Planning Commission come and give a talk at one of our meetings and just talk to us about, you know, their, their journey through planning their, <laughs> their wonderful sustainability report. Um, I think that's it. Yeah. So this is where we are so far. So we have come up with six areas that we are focusing on. So we are focusing on water management, waste management, transportation, energy, biodiversity, and conservation and Mark Evans, apparently. And Mark Evans. Just kidding. <laughs> it's actually administrative, which just means like township focused things that the municipality can do. Um, the goals of our report are to make it, we, we want it to be easy to understand, of course. We want it to be comprehensive, but we also want it to be achievable. Um, so to, uh, to do that, we've basically been aligning a lot of our goals and recommendations to things that the township is already kind of doing. So that is one um, wonderful thing that we have discovered as a task force, like the, the township is actually already doing a lot. So it's very easy for us to come up with more recommendations for the township. Um, so we came up with um, four areas that we kind of focus our recommendations to. So our recommendations can be assessment and explorations. They can be policy recommendations. They can also be actions that can be taken like now or in the future. And then we also have outreach recommendations for the township. Um, I think that's it. So these are just where we're going to go through three examples in a couple of the um, <clears throat> areas that we identified. So in the topic of biodiversity and conservation, um, we, we have, for example, some recommendations to adopt policies to strengthen tree and woodland protections. So we all know that trees and woodlands are important. And we also know that development happens and the township needs to grow so but there are ways to sort of balance this um with some zoning codes and other recommendations um so we just have some of them listed up here on the slide um the first one is very technical zoning codes but basically it's just saying to limit the disturbance of woodland distraction um to 50 percent instead of 60 percent so it's like a very simple thing that you could just sort of implement and be like, hey guys, this is what you have to do now. Sorry. Um, in Saldo, um, you could include measures that protect the trees that are remaining on a construction site from construction activities that could be damaging to the trees. So it's basically just like telling people, be careful. Don't hurt the trees, guys. Come on. Um, you can also prohibit disturbing specimen trees and PNDI sites unless there's no feasible alternative. So you like construction companies would need to explore 
other options if they were going to actually disturb or hurt some of the native um, plants and trees that we have. Um, and then this last one is actually really fun. So, so it would calculate the required tree replacement based on the number and the size of trees removed rather than on a per lot basis. So right now it's two to three per lot, but what this new recommendation would say would be, hey, look at the actual size and number of trees and figure out how many trees you would need to plant to make up for what you just cut down. Um, so hopefully it would keep them from chopping down the really big, pretty trees, you know, like that would be nice, maybe. <laughs> um, okay, waste management, super important. Um, so actually though, you, you will be happy to know that the township actually does better than the national average in recycling. Well, could you repeat that? Yeah, we do better than the national average at recycling. So like the national average in 2018 was 32%. The township actually does 38%, which yeah, is, look at that. which is, that, that, that's good. So we said, oh, it would be great as a recommendation to set a slightly higher goal of 40% and just round it out right there. Wouldn't that be great? And then we have recommendations for ways the township can do that. So like exploring composting programs and then also creating a recycling campaign to educate residents on like where they can take harder to throw away things, you know, like electronics, fun stuff like that. Um, and then the last one is transportation, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, and so one of our recommendations um, has to do with improving safety and access for pedestrians and cyclists. So a lot of people driving through our township to get to other places. I mean, there's fun stuff to do here too, obviously, but like there is a lot of driving and we would just really like to see the township be more pedestrian and cyclist friendly, especially when like the trail gets built through and things like that. It would just be really nice if the township was more walkable and people could spend more time walking around instead of driving everywhere. Um, so some of the recommendations we have for doing that are like implementing traffic calming techniques, um, completing the sidewalk system. It would be really great if there was a sidewalk to the acne from my house. I would love that actually. Um, I'm putting that request in now. Um, and also coordinating with PennDOT for the upcoming Route 30 bypass expansion um, to allow for safe pedestrian and cyclist passage in all of those awesome places. It would just be really great if we could ride our bikes and walk around instead of driving. I would love that so much. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. So we still have stuff to do because we still have to actually like compile the report. We have a lot of ideas and we've got them mostly organized, but now we have to make the report pretty for everyone to see. Um, we're also going to be engaging with more local e experts so we still have a couple more meetings until April, 2025, when we hope to have this all done. So we're going to invite some more experts to talk about specific things that we've identified in our, in our resources that we wanna learn more about. Um, and yeah, we should have final recommendations by April, 2025, because we're making such good progress because we're amazing. Awesome. That's the end. <laughs> Thank you. Any questions? Uh, Commissioners, any questions? Excellent presentation. Yes, very well. Really enjoyed. Thank you. you. Guys are doing a lot of good work. <laughs> yeah, they, I I loved the uh, you know talking about doing tree surveys uh, where people are going to develop every time the developer comes in here, and we say anything of or not even just a developer. Sometimes that I know in some of the zoning workshops we were saying. Uh, why don't you keep the existing trees and work around? Oh, they're all dead. Oh yeah, they're, they're all they're all in, 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 invasive. I would really like to see an accounting of which ones are dead, and because yeah, it's thank you for all you're doing. I'm I'm very excited about this. Yeah, I know who these people are. Believe me. <laughs> 
Thank you. Excellent group. Thanks. Thank you so much. Looking forward to uh, the, the report. Yes. We will not hesitate to <laughs> implement those. Oh, no. This is the end of our presentation. There's no more present. Does anyone else want to present? <laughs> We're just in a good mood now. I guess we can move on to our township manager, Mr. Vimazal. Believe me, it took me a while to learn that. Vimazal, okay? You say Vimazal, I say Vimazal. Good evening, Commissioner. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Hey, John. Uh, just a couple of items uh, this evening. The uh, first two action items on the agenda uh, related to meetings, schedules for the rest of the year. Uh, the first would be in the November meetings. Uh, we do have a conflict. Many of the board members brought to my attention on November 14th. Um, and then, of course, the 28th is Thanksgiving. And uh, we can certainly have the meeting if the mm. board would like to, but uh, I've heard. Yeah. I would be zooming in. <laughs> After this circulating and looking at some dates potentially for a rescheduled uh, November meeting, uh, it uh, seems to be November 12th. That's a Tuesday. Uh, but works for members of the board. Um, so that would be the recommendation would be to reschedule the meeting November 12th for November. That's Commissioners, we're all in agreement for the 12th. That's right. a Tuesday. You're correct. Tuesday. Okay. So with that, uh, we would just need to entertain a motion to cancel the November 14th and the 28th meetings and reschedule for 11 12. Second. Moved. Moved by Commissioner Young, second by Commissioner Evans. All in favor? Say aye. Aye. Motion passes 5 0. And this is typical just for anyone who hasn't been to a meeting this time of year. We, we have to do this every year. It's, it's not like we're just trying to cut back on meetings. It's right. these holidays. And, and on the 12th, we are discussing the budget. That's correct. Okay. Mark DeYoung, uh, I just want to make sure you heard that. Okay. We changed the day because uh, last year everything got messed up and, and you missed it. So I'm just putting it out there. I know you'd like to join us on this. We will be sure to advertise it, get it on the website, get it on the board out yeah. front. We'll, we'll make sure it's, you know. He's our money man, so he keeps us in check. All right, and uh, next, December meeting. Excuse me. It's a similar request. Uh, the, the current, uh, the last meeting of the month is the, the final Thursday is on December 26th, the day after Christmas. Uh, my understanding is in the past that meeting has been canceled due to the holiday, uh, which would mean the workshop and business meeting will both take place on the, the second Thursday of December, December 12th. Uh, so this would be a request, uh, uh, recommendation to uh, cancel the December 26th board meeting. The board would so choose. Wait a minute. So with that, as I'll be in Australia, I might make that motion to cancel. <laughs> <laughs> and that's December 20th. Has been moved. Could you repeat that again, please? Currently, there's a board meeting scheduled on December 26th, the day after see, Christmas. Right, which is the holiday. Okay, the so that's after. canceled. Like, so we're well, making one, it. Once we vote on it, Lorraine. And oh, then, okay, then that's it, what I mean. That's... Officially, we have a motion on the floor. Do I have a second? Second. I move by Commissioner Young, second by Commissioner Evans. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Motion passes 5 0. Meeting has been canceled of everything on that first meeting in December. Thank you very much. We will make sure this is advertised appropriately in the Daily Local, be on the Township website, and uh, social media will get the message out there about these changes. Perfect. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Next on the agenda? Uh, next on the agenda, we have an update to uh, <laughs> Davis Farmhouse roof replacement. I believe Saul Ross's name. Yeah. yeah. Uh, here to cover some of the specifics, but a lot of work has gone into uh, this uh, this project and uh, excited to see it underway. It's, it's not a meeting until we see Ross. <laughs> Welcome, Ross. Oh, hey. <laughs> and Ross's helper. Yes, my little assistant. <laughs> Welcome. 
Good, good evening, commissioners. Ross. All right, so uh, to give you an update about the, the farmhouse roof, uh, you'll probably remember from a previous meeting that we were going to put together a site meeting to go out and look at a few more of the features of the, the building, especially the porch on the south, a little more closely uh, to see if we could maybe preserve some of the historic elements of that. So we uh, did convene a meeting uh, and the contractor was there as well as some of the township staff and a few members of uh, Gilmore and Associates, my company. And um, so our contractor debt wire roofing, that was the low bidder. I think that we were pretty fortunate with them because they were describing a, a number of historic preservation and restoration type projects that they've done. So they have a, a good amount of experience in that area. And so they came and we looked at a number of things together and they had a lot of really good suggestions, I think about ways that we could just do things a little bit differently and preserve some, uh, some of the features there. So for example, um, on the underside of the porch structure on the south side of the farmhouse, like so the main porch, um, we can preserve this like um, like sawn lumber beams that are holding up the structure. So they have a, like a very historic feel to them. And also we can save the posts, which have, they're pretty like decorative. There's like a nice like architectural elements to them, as well as um, some of the decorative woodwork up at the top of the posts, like right under the ceiling. So we, we've determined a way to preserve all of those features. Um, and then the railings, in, we're gonna now do like a, a wood railing that's very similar to uh, the ones that were existing before. They'll be new because most of them have, are gone or deteriorated, but what we can put back will be quite similar to what was there originally. Uh, so I think those are like a number of really good changes that we came up with. There's a couple other miscellaneous things, but those are the bulk of them. And then um, the, the contractors seemed very cooperative. Uh, it seemed like a really collaborative process. And um, there's some of the work some of the changes were more work, some were a little bit less work. And so it seems like we have worked it out that we think this is just going to be cost neutral so that you know we get these changes that I think will make everybody happy. And we're not really anticipating that it'll increase the, the cost of the project. So we were quite happy with the outcome of that meeting and coordination. And then uh, so that, that just we took a little time to put that meeting together and do some follow ups from that. So we probably now are looking at actually starting the work like in uh, the next week or two, whereas we were thinking we would start probably on Monday of next week. So uh, probably pushed back, you know, the, another week or two. But I think that was time well spent with those changes. Fantastic. Commissioners, any comments, questions? No, it's just so we're so lucky that we got Detweiler, you know, that someone who actually cares and appreciates, that, the value, appreciates what know. it is, can look at it and say, because I think the original plan was just they rip the whole thing start. off right. and start again. And uh, no, that's beautiful. It's really exciting. And and I think uh, a roof color was, was, was picked. Yes. Yes. Yeah. The township selected the aged bronze color. Fantastic. That should look lovely. Yeah. Thanks so much, Ross. Sure thing. Thank you very much for your time. And any questions from uh, residents? Sure. <laughs> yeah. I one comment here in the township building saying, saying it sounds wonderful. Thank you. Any in Zoom? That's great. Ross, you're incredible. Thank you so much. Yes. My pleasure. I uh, will see you again in a few weeks. Right. Sounds good. Take care. Oh, oh, I like this one. Don, what do we have? There's this uh, uh, new charity event uh, that the Cal Township Police Department will be yeah, participating sure. in. Uh, this program's been around for several years in the past. Cal Township had not participated, but. Um, a number, I think 22 police departments throughout the county as of last year were participating. Uh, this is a, an initiative where for the three months, October, November, and December, officers, whereas traditionally the, the, the department has a, a grooming policy, a facial hair policy that's very strict, there's uh, no facial hair allowed on officers. Uh, but for the three months, October, November, December, those who wish to participate in this charity uh, would 
pay, I believe it's a couple hundred dollars, and they would be allowed, permitted to, to grow a beer <laughs> during that period. Um, I'm very curious to see which officers are going to be participating and how successful they would be. Um, but it does, any funds raised through this program would go to uh, a number of Chester County uh, charities. Uh, Unite for Her, the Sambuco Children's Education mm -hmm. Fund, Child's Life, Ch Chester County Crime Victim Center. Uh, that money will be equally distributed towards good charities within the county. And, uh, I know the uh, chief and the officers are looking forward to helping to, to give back in that way. Yeah. Uh, in your packets, there's also, of course, an update to the, the, the policy, uh, which would allow officers to participate in this program if they choose. It's voluntary, of course. Uh -huh. uh, but uh, that, that initiative is underway. This chief, I know, wanted to, to present uh, this to the board this evening. Um, is it is going to be a change just in case members of the public see officers with facial hair? Um, it's his virgin cause. Is the chief growing a beard? I, is that why he's not here? <laughs> it's in that rough phase right now. <laughs> we will see. That's to be determined. It's great. I, I think it's a wonderful idea because, yeah. uh, I usually have <laughs> facial hair. Yeah. Great question. Thank you. And for those um, in Zoom, the question was, is there an opportunity for the public to participate um, and donate? And yes, there will be, and we'll be making sure to uh, have that on the township website, on social media, and we'll share that out. So if anyone would care to support, I don't know if it's sponsoring an officer, mm -hmm. uh, but supporting charities and the program itself, of course. Thank you. Good question. And don't anyone get any ideas of starting odds on gambling on whose beard comes in the fastest and stuff like that? That's no, not, not cool. <clears throat> All right. Comments from uh, Zoom? And this time, looking forward to seeing uh, some of the police oh, officers. Yeah. Uh, no dying. Yeah, I hope that people don't think that they're wearing blue beards. I know it's just because of the uniform, but you know, you think they're really going to walk around with a dyed blue beard? Don't mm -hmm. a blue beard. <laughs> yeah, people get that idea. Though. Right. Thank you, Don. All right, next on the agenda, board minutes to approve for September twenty sixth. Uh, any questions, comments? Just a comment. I'll be abstaining because I wasn't. Me too. We have to abstain three of us that attended. So entertain a motion to approve the minutes. So move. So move. Second. Moved by Commissioner Kennedy, second by Commissioner Tendero. All in favor, say aye. 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 Three. Okay. We got three with two abstained. So minutes have been approved. Next finance uh, department, we have a check run 52,818 to 52,882. Any comments, questions on the bills? If not, entertain a motion. So moved. So moved. So moved. It has been moved. Second. And a second. <laughs> <laughs> like an auction there. <laughs> so. Moved by Commissioner Young, second by Commissioner Tendero. All in favor, say aye. 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 Checks have been approved. Uh, oh, there are board liaisons. Okay. Uh, we will start off with Park and Rec. Park and Rec. And, and we have most of them here. So this yeah, is well, exciting. Yeah. If you guys love if, it. If I, if I miss anything, just chime in, please. So as you guys know, Park and Rec, so this is our busy time of the year and fun time for everyone. For kids of all ages can join in with all the festivities and activities that we're sponsoring throughout the rest of this year. I believe that this Saturday, there are two events. Are we doing the metal seating on Saturday? And we're going to meet here at the township building at 10 o'clock? At 3 o'clock. But then there's also a Callan cleanup crew that's going to be getting together this Saturday as well. That's and at 10. We'll be meeting here at the township at 10, and they're going to be working on Lincoln Highway. So we're actually going to be doing um, Black Horse Hill Road right by the VA. 
Okay. Um, it was recently brought to my attention that it's there's a really trashy strip along there. Um, so we're going to park at the VA. And everyone who signed up has gotten that information, but we still have room for more people. So parking lot G <clears throat> on Saturday morning. Come and help us clean up some trash. Did everyone hear that? Parking lot G at the VA Medical Center. And then we also are planning for our annual Halloween party and trunk or treat. That's going to be held on October the 26th. And it's going to be filled with a lot of fun and activities with the scavenger hunt, you know, the candy corn, guess how many. And also we'll have uh, Santa Cooper's dance troupe. Those guys do an amazing job with the kids with the uh, trunk or treat dance exhibits. And they plan so many uh, fun things for the kids. I mean, uh, they just make everything so much better, bringing all the extra activities in. Um, also, we'll be having, getting ready for our holiday tree lighting. And that's going to be held on December 8th. And with the Maestro Singers, Santa will be arriving, hot chocolate, cookies, s'mores. We'll probably think of some other things. Did you want to announce the trip at this time? The, the trip? No, maybe not. I no. can. So. Oh. We are, once again, after a hiatus, uh, doing one bus trip to New York this year, uh, December 14th, and the tickets are selling fast. Mm -hmm. So um, tomorrow morning, I'm going to put the link out um, on Facebook and on the town's website, and I have a feeling we'll be full by the end of the day, but we could only get one bus. So better, better than nothing, but uh, next year, we might need a couple. Okay, that's going to be fun. So hopefully we'll be, once I, I, I'm sure once it hits the website, it's going to be a sellout. So I don't know. As soon as she pushed that button, it's, it's over. And Helen, you're going to be our host. Is she going to host? Who's going to host? Uh, Isabel. Isabel. Is gonna come back. Who's going to host? Okay. And Helen will be helping with the OCHS uh, tour fundraiser. Yeah. So. That'll be fun. So, all right. So we're back up and running and full speed ahead with lots of other things looking down into the spring, at our playgrounds and parks and things that we're uh, anticipating for 2025 budget. And as always, you're welcome to get on board. In regards to COG, our last meeting was held on September 25th. And we, uh, uh, instead of a traditional meeting, we met uh, at the uh, Chester County what is it over there? Training campus. And we were featured with experts to guide us into the impact of planning and zoning issues in our municipalities. And what does it really look like and how it impacts, you know, the trajectory of, you know, how we want our townships to look. And that's why we're spending so much time now, you know, working on rezoning so that we can have a picture of what we want our township to look like and how we want to see it in the future. I mean, we're talking like, we're planning now to see what we look like in the next 10 years, you know? So that's just how far in advance we have to think because things are coming so fast and we have to control, you know, these builders and investors and, you know, how they're coming into the township and what we'll permit, you know, same with the, the sustainability group, you know, we're there as well to make sure that Callan Township remains a beautiful place to live, raise families, to grow, to work. And, you know, so it was good hearing it. It was from some local attorneys from Chester County, and they gave a lot of good information, a lot of feedback on um, zoning and law use, uh, regional and multi-municipal planning, uh, also zoning hearing procedures, mm -hmm. and what that looked like. And we as commissioners and other governing bodies throughout um, Western uh, Chester County, uh, had input and shared ideas on, you know, what they want their municipalities to look like in the future as well. Thank you. Jane, report. <clears throat> Municipal Authority. Oh, excuse me. At uh, September's meeting, uh, we approved an encroachment agreement to allow the property owners of, on the 1500 block of Reed Street to install a fence in the sanitary sewer easement. Uh, 
Representatives from the authority hosted two meetings on September 16th, one in the afternoon, one in the evening, uh, with property owners of Count Meeting House in Granger Lane. Ah, yay. <laughs> I'm looking at you. All right. Uh, so the residents have the opportunity to learn more about the sewer extension project that's going on, uh, or soon be going into their neighborhood. Uh, then the phase one portion of the Ray Road Emergency Stabilization Project began on September 16th, which consisted of an emergency stabilization of existing sewer main by concrete encasing the main in two locations and armoring the street banks in those locations with the riprap that we love to see sometimes uh, to prevent further erosion that area. The contractor completed the work on September 24th. And for Dara, something a little better update. Uh, Dara met with West Whiteland and Euclid Townships in September about their flow projections and the future excuse me, expansion. Uh, both townships showed an interest in moving forward with the project. That is good news. Uh, modernization of a project for Dara is still in the process working on uh, the design permitting, financing, and possible grants for the modernization project. So that's exciting. Uh, fire department, uh, we did not meet, but just as a reminder, they have an open house this Saturday uh, between 11 and two. All right, you're gonna see fire demonstrations, truck tours, equipment display. Uh, I hear Sparky the dog is gonna show up. I, and I'm reading this right off the website, so I you know, just jotted my notes. And uh, some barbecue can never go wrong with some barbecue. So, uh, you know, if you're not in one of the, at, at one of the park and rec events, stop on in here and uh, support our fire department. All right, next, uh, Historical Commission. Welcome, everyone, to the Historical Commission Rundown. <laughs> you know, I... We had to cancel our meeting in September, so uh, think things got a little too uh, too busy there for everyone. But we are meeting next Wednesday, uh, the sixteenth, I believe. We'll be meeting right here live at seven p.m. You can also join us by Zoom, but we're a lot more fun in person. We did have our last schoolhouse tour of the year this past Sunday. It's always sad when that last tour. Uh, happens but we had a nice group of our own uh members of the historical commission there hanging out uh together and we had a nice turnout of, of tourists especially considering that we were up against uh downingtown fest so um you know we it just keeps getting better and i, I want to tip my hat to tom parr who did a wonderful job maintaining the flower beds around that that schoolhouse this year we're very excited uh, about what's coming in the future. Uh, I'm not going to make this meeting go any longer because uh, I want to get home. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know what? I got to give a shout out to Tom Parr too. I Because I drove by earlier yeah. and I was wondering what he was doing there. He's walking back and forth and he was setting things up. He was he was yeah. ahead of the game. Oh, yeah. So thank you, Tom, if you're online. All right, and uh, last but not least, Lincoln High. Oh, wait a minute, not not last. No, we uh, second second to well, least. Uh, uh, Lincoln Highway. Sorry. So, uh, at our last meeting, we discussed um, the Cohen property um, uh, plans. Um, we went quite in depth to, into them. We discussed the marijuana ordinance um, and how that affects Lincoln Highway. Um, we also. Uh, talked a little bit about the zoning uh, task force as most of us are also on the zoning task force. And um, what was the last thing we talked about? Sign ordinance. Oh, the sign ordinance. Um, and trying to um, go over that once more before it gets presented to the zoning task force. So that's it. Thank you, Josh. Oh, yeah. the historical protection ordinance. Oh, yes. talk, I'm sorry. All right. Ingleside Golf Course. Hi, this Hi. is Lorraine <laughs> Sendero, and I'm going to be talking about Ingleside Golf reports a robust September revenue of 
$83,000 and $2,700 rounds played for the month. Interviewing several people for the golf pro, hiring also a golf shop manager and two more staff people. Planning events and fundraisers for 2025. The roof repair for the pro shop, it will be fixed. We're looking into insurance claims to cover the cost. Dead trees have been cut down by public works. We're working on airifying the greens for grass health and growth. Thanks again. Bye. Thanks, Bye. Lori. All right. Next on the agenda, additional business. Any of this time? From the commissioners. All right. Uh, public comment. Reach out to the township here. Are all excited? I'm not sure if it's just to end the meeting or you know get home or just about everything we discussed. Uh, how about in Zoom? Not at this time. All right. Entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. moved and second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Meeting adjourned. Have a great evening. Thank Take you. Take care, everyone.